Started by renowned South African comedian Stuart Taylor, the Joburg comedy invasion will be taking place this month at the Silver Star Casino in Krugerstorp. This one night only performance will see three great local comedians come together to bring laughter to the audience. From Chris Forrest, Joey Rastin and Ebenezer Debakwane will take to the stage to give attendees an authentic taste of the Joburg's funny scene. It's a big show that will be taking place in an intimate space allowing the comedians to be one on one with the audience. Now joining us now is uh, Ebenezer Tibakwane to tell us more about the show. Very good morning to you, and welcome. Welcome to you, Simpure. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> happy to, happy just happy to have you in studio. <laughs> okay, take us through how you got involved in this show. Oh, um, the way I got involved in this show, uh, it started off with a childhood of sadness. Um, I'm very emotional today, though. Yeah. Because uh, 20 years ago to this day, my father left the house, um, just left, mm -hmm. um, packed his bags, got in the car, and he drove off. He came up. He came back after work because black dads are working out there to change the stereotypes. And I'm emotional, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. No, uh, I, I worked hard, man. I, I did a few club gigs and then I won an award. I won a second one. I was in Cape Town recently and I think that's when he saw my talent and thought he'd involve me in the show. Mm. You know, uh, you, you rose to fame after winning the Savannah Comic Choice Award. How has things been after that? Oh, it's crazy. I have to, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm engaged, so I've, yeah. I've had to... Ignore a lot of messages you are engaged, on my eh? phone. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> no, I mean, it's a serious relationship. But no, yeah. Um, um, yeah, it's been good, man. 2016, I won the newcomer. 2017, I won the intermediate comics. I've got two awards. Mm. Two time comic award winning. Jeez, man. What makes you tick? What makes it so special? I mean, you are in demand almost every weekend. Mm -hmm. I try to avoid certain subjects. Like, I don't do Oscar Pistorius jokes. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I, I hate them, I despise them, I simply can't stand them. Yeah. <laughs> Killing the game on Morning Live, all right? <laughs> I, I just try to be original with my material and my outlook on life. And also, I just try to make a brand of love. Because I feel um, if, I, if, if, if my constituents or the people that support me love me, they'll never let me hunger. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so I try, to, I try to be very personal and intimate with my followers, yeah. Okay, so where then do you draw the line between uh, freedom of speech and mm. just making people laugh? You know, it's actually a very difficult question because uh, a lot of comics will argue that if you can make it funny, that our job is to be funny. Our job is not to be politically correct, you know? We've come to a space now where uh, comedians have to have a, a certain voice and a knowledgeable voice where we just come from like foolishness, you know what I'm saying? That's, a, that's where you originate from. It's become something more nuanced and sophisticated. But um, I do draw the line personally when it comes to infringing on other people's rights. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, for instance, if my opinion about, let's say, homosexual people will infringe on their freedom to live yeah. and express themselves in certain spaces. And I've got, many of my audience members are homosexual. Okay. That's why I draw the line. Why do you wanna, I don't wanna cause people pain? You know what I'm saying? So I believe in PC culture, um, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's, a very, it's a very gray area. So are your jokes spontaneous or you have to think hard about them? Um, the, if you wanna do a show, the jokes, you have to think about them. You have to think about them hard, you know? Okay. Like, you know, if you, wanna, if you wanna make them, you know what I mean? Yeah. If, you, if you want to make a show, like a, a body of work that, is, uh, con that, that, that works together, that is a full body in its art, sure. I think you have to write a little bit, but in between, when someone does something, or uh, <laughs> <laughs> This guy is three no, quarters. No, 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 you got no, money, no, no, you can't no, no, afford no, no, the extra no, no, material. No, 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 I'm going to chuck you out of my studios. <laughs> <laughs> don't, please don't. All right, so what, uh, what uh, you know, inspires you for your sets? Mm, I'm, I'm, I'm my, 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 my major influence, I'd say, in the South African industry, in the world, actually, is Mojo Klohoko. He's like, uh, I like to call him my comedy dad. Um, but uh, I think pain, man. A lot of this stuff comes from pain, you know? Like, um, I'll just talk about how as black people, for instance, um, we're not, we, we don't know how to discuss our feelings, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so your friend will ask you, Jorge, yo, man, Ebenezer, how are you? And I'm like, I'm sad. My life is not getting together. My career is failing. Um, I'm sad, man. I don't want to I don't, I don't do this. I want to quit. Then yeah. black people, this is how much they care. They're like, oh, okay. Otherwise, otherwise, <laughs> eh? Roaring otherwise, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? So it's funny, the pain in that. It's a very sad thing that we were not able to discuss it with each other, our difficulties. But then I like to use that pain and draw from it and try to create humor. You know, it's funny because, uh, you know, we're the only nation in the world which use the word otherwise as a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> roaring. <laughs> so in this show, what is it that you want your audience to take away from it? I want you guys uh, to take away that I'm a brilliant comic. I'm joking. Um, yeah, man. That, uh, <laughs> no, you, li you, are. you are. Life is tumultuous. I'll give that to you. Yeah, life yeah. is tumultuous. You yeah. know, and it's, it's going to be difficult. And there's no escaping of that. The one thing you can guarantee in life is pain. Um, sure. The best we can do is laugh, sing, and dance in and through it all. Yeah. yeah. That's you know, I feel. you'll be sharing the stage with some of the country's finest and greatest uh, local comedians. Mm. And uh, I mean... Uh, 
What has that done to you as a comedian? How has that helped shape your, your career? Uh, it's, I mean, you know, like comics, at, uh, after a certain amount of time, comics are just comics, you know? Mm. Comedians are just comedians. But for me to share a stage like Chris Forrest, you know what I'm saying, who I was nine years old in 2003 when I right. saw him on the PMS show. You know what I'm saying? Joey Rasdeen as well, both of them. Right. I was nine, you know what I mean? I had no idea that I'd find myself in studio today right. talking about being a stage. So with me, it just gives me hope and it, it, it shows me that if, if I work very hard, I can arrive in a space where they also call me some of the greatest, one of the greatest yeah, yeah, in the yeah. industry. Talk to me about this phenomenon of uh, comedians stealing each other's jokes. Oof. I hope you're not one of them. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, you know, sometimes, some, sometimes people steal, man. it happens, it happens a yeah. lot. Um, that's weird for me. But for me, whenever someone steals from me, I say to myself, bruh, if you're going to be a comedian for the rest of your life, then it means you must be able to write more material. Sure. Just let right. them have it. They, they are running out of the source. You know what I'm saying? They've run out. They need to take from you. Draw okay. from you. So uh, they say imitation is the best form of flattery. Right. Right? right. Um, right. On the other hand, sometimes it's a mistake. You know, like when now you, your mom, for instance, all of our mothers uh, used to pull the blankets off us. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you don't wake up in time. Or all of our mothers would uh, ask you, you know what I'm saying? So then you as a comedian, you go write about the experience that sure. I've had. And sometimes it sounds like, wow, what are you stealing? But really, it's just we live the same lives. Um, Give us more details about this show and you can invite your, your fans. Okay, um, so the, the tickets are 150 rand, South African rand. Shoo! <laughs> at Silver Stock. Ah, shoo! <laughs> this man, the record, he broke, I knew he broke. 150 rand, JSCI, Joba Comedy Invasion, Taylor Made. Um, and it is at Silver Stock because then you can get them on Compute Ticket. Uh, follow me. Not on the streets, please, on social media. <laughs> well, if I have to endorse you, I will. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. That was Ebenezer talking to us about the Joburg comedy invasion, which is set to take place later this month at Silver Star Cartoon. Stop it, man. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Sorry. Let's go to an ad break now. <laughs> I'm on TV, bro. <laughs> Get the facts first. In 1994, I think it was just was For South Africa, art was never a good thing. From a footballing point of view, there was never a separation. Get to the truth. There's still some serious issues in South Africa. But I think the government can be able to do it to be able to do it. The apartheid in Sutile, the only thing that we can do is to See what it all really means. I is geel, and this is the clear and the verkeerslag that you say we are I still give South Africa a hate. We are somewhere in between. We're giving our democracy a green for sure. We're very happy. Democracy Gauge, weekdays at 5.30 on SABC News, Channel 404. On the 7th of February, the season premiere of